for time description. So, hello, uh, I'm Sharon uh, Today, I am going to talk about breaking down your silos using metrics. So, a bit about me. Uh, I have been in tech for over 25 years now. I am presently uh, uh, partnered up with Duturgia and am their senior consultant for East Asia. I'm also the acting vice president of the Open Tech Association of Thailand. We're trying to uh, promote uh, the open source culture in Thai society and organizations. And because I love open source so much, I have decided to homeschool my kids. This is actually applying open source culture to raising child and that earned me a TED talk and this lovely photo of me, which looks nothing like a real thing. <laughs> um, turn here. Again, 50 years of expertise, uh, very smart folks there. Uh, they founded the Code Chaos Project in 2017, which is about using metrics for software development and communities. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Maintains the open source Grimoire Lab metrics tools and is the official metric partner of Open Infra and Non Focus Foundations. Uh, there's a suite of, uh, of services from uh, Detergia, uh, starting from uh, uh, the analytics part, as well as uh, doing customizations, consultants, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, around all of this. Uh, and uh, so, a lot of companies have uh, trusted Detergia with our um, with our output. So, silos, right? Silos are an amazing place to store your brain and your code, right? Um, most, most organizations are silos. Uh, what does this mean is that when you work in your company, you work within your own silo. Who, who here works in a large corporation? Like let's say over 100 or 1,000, right? So you would understand that reaching out to someone across your organization is extremely difficult, right? Basically, for the most part, you have very little interaction with them if, you are, um, if you're working in a silo. The, your only interface with the rest of your organization, organization is your boss, right? And it is up to your boss to coordinate and communicate uh, no matter what you need. If it's anything that's outside your team, talk to your boss. So this is a feature, not a bug. Uh, it has been developed in the pre-internet days, and it's often a very easy way of managing people and teams. Right? Use your boss as an interface. We write modular code with uh, loose coupling. This is uh, loosely coupled organizations, sort of. Um, so let's say you work in your silo, right? And you have developed a tool. Um, let's say that the tool is a hammer and a spanner. And you build or acquire or buy a hammer and a spanner for use within your department. Cool. Another silo, right, a continent away maybe, also uses a hammer and a silo, uh, uses a, a hammer and a spanner, right? But you guys don't talk. You guys don't know that you have built your hammers and spanners. So they start you, uh, building the hammer and a spanner from scratch. A third only happens to be the hammer. So they build their own hammer. So in the end, you have your silos, each with their variations of hammers, and, uh, which they made and maintained by themselves. So, and they are there because they are there to solve a problem, right? But you have to go back, really go back and ask yourself, do your customers pay you for your hammers? Because you have been spending a lot of time and effort and resources making hammers. Right? So unless you are a hammer company, uh, unless you are a hardware company making hammers, your customers are not paying you for your hammers. Right? They are a tool that you need in order to get your work done, but they're not paying you for your hammers. Um, they are, however, paying you for the end product of what your hammer makes. So, if we 
if we were using physical hammers, this is justified, right? You, every silo needs its own hammers. But we're talking about digital artifacts, code. Uh, the hammers are only metaphors. So back to our hammers. In order to remove waste here, let's break down these silos. We put all your tools in a central place. Uh, because it's in the sky, conveniently, there are clouds. So we put them in the clouds. Right. Uh, the difference when you're sharing physical hammers, uh, physical items such as hammers, is that uh, physical items are a zero-sum game. You give someone a hammer, you don't have a hammer. However, when you give away code, both of you end up retaining the code. So the tool becomes, um, it, it benefits everyone who participates in the sharing. And because it's been improved together, it's been tested, then it's improved, people, uh, the tools get better because it has been tested under diverse conditions and improved under conditions. So rather than each silo maintaining their entire tool chain from the, uh, from the beginning, all the tooling from the beginning, everyone uh, share, uh, shares it. So you can have your silos, right? Um, one can do bug fixes, uh, another one support, another education, security, so on and so forth. So the resources available to improve your hammers is multiplied. Uh, at, the, at the same time, the resources uh, required to maintain it, it becomes a fraction of its original resource. So, which is why breaking down your silos increases efficiencies, right? Um, and uh, with the help, and with InnerSource, it helps you uh, free up to free up resources to pursue uh, more challenging things that your customers value. So now that we have goals, let's talk about metrics. What are metrics? Metrics are tools that helps us measure how well something is doing. Uh, they give us information to evaluate uh, progress and make smart decisions. Um, however, um, it is only useful if you know what you're going to do with the metrics. Okay. So in inner source, good metrics are easy to collect, easy to understand. Uh, they're, rep they're representative to the, of the question or expected outcomes. And they are useful if the they are most useful if they are actionable, um, and if, but if not, they should be uh, informative. Uh, it doesn't have to be too precise, uh, but it should be informative enough. And so, because remember, we are managing a product. We're, we're, we're not scientists, so so the ultimately the position doesn't uh, doesn't matter that much. So we have here, and these are. Uh, pretty good goals, enhancement, bug fixes, support, etc., etc. Right? Now, when you have your metrics, it is good to be uh, be strategic about them. Right? So there's a couple of techniques that we can use, which I'll cover. But first, there's a story. So a police officer stumbles across a drunk man fumbling around under a street light. The policeman asks, what are you doing? The drunk man says, I'm looking for my keys. Policeman said, where'd you leave them? Where'd you last see it? Drunk man says, over there in that alley. The policeman says, why are you looking over here? Drunk man says, this is where the light is. Um, so <laughs> this story illustrates the danger of, uh, of many types of scientific and data project, right? Because you. If you measure product, product, productivity, for example, you can stick an MRI machine uh, on the heads of all your employees to see how motivated they are. You have to measure secondary or um, uh, information. And sometimes it's just the best that you have, right? You can only derive information by looking at the street light and try to figure it out from there. So, We have goal, question, metrics, right? Uh, that is why it's important to start with what you're looking, looking for, not what you're looking at, right? 
So we so the, this with this strategy, uh, it was developed by Victor uh, Basili in the 1980s, I believe. Uh, we can have more meaningful conversations about uh, about what we're trying to measure. So we start with the goal, what we're trying to achieve, then we go on to the questions uh, that uh, that support those goals, and then ultimately we come up with the metrics that will support the questions. So, for example, the question is, how often do customers encounter bug or issues with our software? A metric that you can use is customer reported issue, the, the number of customer reported issues. Uh, the question can then be, how, uh, can be how easy is our software to use? The metric usability ratings, for example, right? So you see goal, question, metrics, question, metrics. So all of the, the question and the metrics support the goal. However, if you have, uh, with the metric start with the metric customer reported issues, you might have difficulty figuring out why you're doing this. It's easier, to, it's much, much more uh, productive to start with your goals. Another strategy to use is the can, do, check, act cycle. Uh, so you start with, uh, you can start with a plan. Uh, for example, identify a high rate of customer reported bugs and set a goal to reduce the number of bugs by 15%. That's a plan. Do implement a new testing process and collect data on bug rates. You check, you analyze the data, and you find that the number of bugs has increased by forty percent. Then you act, which uh, so which means that you make adjustments to the testing pro uh, uh, testing process and continue monitoring the bug rates because you are most likely not going to get the metrics right to begin with. You need to to be open to the idea of iterating this through and constantly reevaluating whether you are the same, uh, on the right path or not, and, uh, and, and improving. Um, you may never finally find those keys, but you would have gathered enough information to know which part of the dark alley it's in, which may be enough. Right. So um, here's a, a lovely example. Uh, IBM, uh, IBM Watson, this, uh, these slides are from a talk originally given by uh, Jeffrey uh, Boric. Um, and uh, he, he talks about the, their transformation to inner source. Right. So um, here, so, the, so you see that in this part, uh, we have the, uh, it is split up into the, the contribution, right? Uh, where the, where you contribute to the inner source part, right? And then you have the adoption phase, right? Um, which makes it uh, very, uh, very clear uh, the roles about who is doing what in, the, in this ecosystem. Now, the metrics are interesting uh, because it maps Right, you have the contribution numbers, right? Fifty contributors, uh, twelve contributors. These are part of the uh, of the contributors, and then we have also have numbers uh, regarding adoption. Um, so you see that over here, there are fifteen products, uh, product teams in the first eighteen months, and uh, with seventy-five le percent less time to value deliver, and ten million dollars saved uh, through reuse alone. Which is which are significant numbers and very very good metrics. This is uh, probably the kind of things that the, your managers would love to hear. So um, let's look at one such approach uh, for our silo breaking effort. We want to see which contributor, which unit, uh, which business units contribute, uh, interact with each other the most. So we use the network analysis metrics. Uh, let me break it down. So we have, we have, uh, we start with a project. This can be code, documentation, anything really. This project has a contributor. In this case, we'll say it's a developer. We draw a line to show that the developer has contributed to the project or has interacted with, the, uh, has committed to the project. Right? And we can keep drawing those lines to show each interaction. And ultimately, these are the beautiful graphs that we can come up with to show the layout of the, the patterns of interactions within your, within your organization. 
So then you can start seeing where the silos are, right? You can see the uh, islands, you can see uh, these guys are working in the, um, uh, by themselves uh, on the periphery, right? You can see uh, two major projects or over here three major projects. Uh, and there are there is some cross uh, interaction, but then you can see that these are all continents, so not so much cycles, but they are but they are but they are continents. So that kind of thing. So with so with visualization like this, with metrics like this, then you can start uh, having an idea on how to make uh, changes and to um, assess the health of the of collaboration within your organization. So this is all generated by the free open source uh, framework lab. So these are continents, communities versus uh, archipelagos, uh, archipelagos right? Uh, this is a, a one project developer versus uh, many, many, uh, many project developers. You can see that they're contributing to many projects. Uh, this is, you can see, collaboration. Uh, these you can see the lines showing collaboration, while these are isolated projects on the periphery. Knowledge silos and continent communities. So you can see that there's a clear dividing line. So there's a line uh, dividing that part and that part and uh, up and down. Right. Um, so this is a tool. Um, it's open source uh, at the Linux Foundation. It collects and displays data. Um, displays data. It supports 30 plus collaboration platforms, and there's a whole bunch of metrics that are included. Um, and with the inner source community, there is a pattern. So if you choose to take this approach and you start implement uh, metrics in your organization. Uh, Please don't do it alone. We have a community, the inner source community. Come and talk to us um, about the metrics that you choose to implement, and let's share some uh, uh, your knowledge, right? Uh, because uh, that way, uh, it is more likely. As I said, uh, the, the more street lights out there, the more likely we'll find you to find our keys together, right? Um, so here, also, uh, metrics in the inner source. Uh, this is an example. So you can see that these are patterns for uh, for contribution and collaboration. Dark, uh, darker numbers means more uh, more contributions. And then you can see here, uh, for example, the number of uh, top PRs uh, open and commit and committed and commits made. So you can see that these are probably some good candidates to come and be your trusted committers in an inner source. That means it's sort of like a maintainer. So you, can, uh, so you can invite them to come and be a maintainer or a trusted committer for your internal projects, right? Uh, policy metrics measure the application of, uh, sorry. Um, so let me start that again. So the goal in here is to increase coding collaboration, right? When you are breaking down metrics, you want to increase the collaboration. So one of the things that you can do is to use a, a root cause analysis to see the factors that hinders collaboration. So uh, so after a root cause collaboration, uh, sorry, root cause analysis, you might come uh, to the conclusion that the commits are too big and they are uh, that they are difficult to review and fix. If they're uh, difficult to review and fix, that is just ignored. And the person making the, the contribution is then uh, quite sad and upset. So, um, so one way to fi to fix it is to start reducing the size uh, of the commits. For example, sorry, yeah. Um, so another thing is to uh, to uh, to continue with the analysis. So we have the questions, right? Uh, how far are well are we applying our our policy? So we have a, a policy metrics. See the. Uh, Evolution of lines per commit. We can track the lines of commit and see whether they're going down or not. Then we can see is the policy succeeding. So we can see the median review time. Uh, then are we being misled by circumstances? Or are we causing unwanted side effects? So we can uh, uh, track the other metrics for the context. Uh, so the number of uh, PRs issued per time frame as a, as a stress metrics, for example. So with metrics, 
great power bears great responsibility, uh, right? Uh, there, there are as because you are looking only where the lights are. Uh, it's a slippery slope with a lot of issues. So, which is why I stress again: seek help from the community. Right? Share what you're trying to do, and uh, and, and let us build up a uh, a database of metrics together. Um, so we are standing on the shoulder of giants here. Uh, there's been a lot of work done both by the inner source commons as well as the chaos uh, community. And we can see, if I can get this move. Yes. So this is the chaos community website. C H A O S S dot community. You can go in there and you can look through the metrics that they have. So let us look through, for example, the contribution metrics. So you can see uh, we have metrics, types of contribution, activity, dates, and time, time to first response, versus So let's see time to first response, for example. So we have descriptions, the first response activity that can sometimes be the most important response. We have objectives, uh, time to first response is important. Is an important consideration for new and long-term contributors to a project along with overall project health. We have uh, implementation guidelines, etc. etc. which is visualization. A, a lot of information about metrics uh, is available. So please look through the website. Uh, these work for open source projects as well as inner source projects. So please look through it and see what, what you can find out, what you find helpful. And subsequently, uh, if you find that you can contribute an improvement. Please open a pull request. And so back to our slides. In summary, suggest that you implement your metrics. Uh, you implement them early on. So if you're a startup, we suggest that you do it uh, early on in your um, in your journey. Please don't roll your own metrics, a bit like crypto. Don't roll your own because you are very, very likely going to make mistakes. Please seek help from the community while, while, while you're doing this. And so before uh, I go, I just want to acknowledge uh, these entities uh, for the, their contribution to these slides. And uh, I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I assume that basically for the network uh, diagram back in uh, like GitHub repos, GitHub repos basically, right? Basically, uh, it, uh, it, I, have, I believe that, that those are foundations. So we can extract data from GitHub and uh, GitHub. Okay, uh, uh, as well as other platforms. On, on the operational side, uh, so I'm not sure about like the uh, data and whatnot, but like, uh, what happens when you lose that? I mean, is, is that uh, is, is the technology? In, um, do the to do the integration with uh, with incident tickets. Yeah, so uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. So there are so it integrates with over thirty platforms, okay. and it has a plugin architecture, so it can support even more. Okay. But most of the popular platforms are supported by uh, by Dream uh, okay. Thank you. Any any other questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much.